Good afternoon and welcome back to the channel. So I have an important video to go over. I have a lot of stories that I need to cover. Some crazy things are happening in Turkey. I want to go over what's happening with Russia and China. Also what the IMF chief economist came out and said. And then I want to talk about all the examples that we're seeing of the dam is breaking, in my personal opinion. And I think that the authoritarian push is about to come to an end over the next three to six months. And I think that we're going to start to see that transition take place. And I think that we're going to start to see the public sector be thrown under the bus by the private sector, in my personal opinion. All of this is just my opinion. This is not financial advice. So do your own research, make your own decisions. I'm not a financial advisor. Okay, so Turkey working to ease banks capital or capital strains amid Lira crash. Turkey's authorities are working on possible relief measures for banks caught between a currency crash and existing capital requirements, including a potential capital injection for state banks, according to three sources familiar with the discussions. And so then it just goes on a little bit further to mention that, but we're starting to see these countries that are really on the edge of a currency collapse and an economic collapse. We're starting to see that become closer and closer to a reality. And as you know, all of our economies are interdependent and we also have this story that's happening with Russia and China. And all I'm saying is that things are expediting at a very fast pace. I don't know when it's all going to fall apart, but I can see the writing on the wall and things are leading in that direction very quickly, in my personal opinion. And again, all of this is net positive for crypto. An economic collapse globally is net positive for crypto. China and Russia partnering together, getting completely away from the U.S. financial system and the U.S. dollar is net positive for crypto. All of these things are net, everything that I'm going to go over is net positive for crypto. All right. So China and Russia pledge to step up efforts to build independent trade network to reduce reliance on the U.S.-led financial system. President Xi Jinping and Vladimir Putin agreed to accelerate attempts to create a system that cannot be influenced by third parties. The two leaders also want to increase the number of deals settled in their own currencies as sanctions threaten to limit as sanctions threaten to limit US dollar transactions. They want to increase the number of deals settled in their own currencies as sanctions threaten to limit US dollar transactions. So they're looking to completely move away from the dollar. They're looking to get away from U.S. trade. On top of this, we know that Russia has a partnership with Saudi Arabia. We know they have a partnership with Nigeria, and we know they just entered into a partnership with India. So if anything serious happens in this regard, who knows what it's going to be? Who knows what the exact catalyst is going to be? All I'm saying is that we're seeing potentially new catalysts pop up every single day, and it's just something to pay attention to because everything, again, is interconnected. And as soon as something happens that starts a global economic collapse or a currency collapse globally is net positive for crypto. The IMF chief economist opposes a crypto ban and she wants the se sector regulated. So I read her comments in here. She was like, yeah, a, a ban would be too difficult, not really probable or it's not plausible. And we need to look at regulation and we don't need to have regulation country to country. There needs to be global consensus when it comes to regulation, and people need to work on that immediately to figure out the regulatory measures that need to be taken right here. So she really was really emphasizing that this needs to happen very quickly as far as regulation around cryptocurrency. So just pay attention to this. This might come from the IMF and the Bank of International Settlements directly. They might put out guidelines. I think they've already put out guidelines. I've read a lot of different PDFs that they've issued over the last couple of years, classifying which particular cryptocurrencies and which digital assets into which category. So I think most of this is already done and it's just a matter of when all of it happens. I'm just gonna sit back and wait for the fireworks. Okay, so the big stories here. Colorado governor says the medical emergency is over and he is a Democrat. Now, it's not just him. It's Colorado, Michigan, Kansas and Minnesota. Now, he's the one that's pushing back the hardest. And he's just saying, yeah, we're done with this. But also, Governor Whitmer says President Biden's mandate is a problem. We're an employer too. the state of Michigan is. I know that if a mandate happens, we're going to lose state employees. That's why I haven't proposed a mandate at state level. Some states have, we have not. We're waiting to see what happens in court. This is not possible. The measures that are being taken are not possible if there is not consensus with the people who are implementing these different measures. If there starts to be a break in the dam and there's been a very big break in the dam that I'm going to show you here, 
it, it's not possible. And what happens is the federal government starts to lose legitimacy. Now, the trend that I'm going to be talking about is the trend that we are seeing in multiple different areas. We're seeing it in the federal government. We're seeing it with finance. We're also seeing it with large corporations and with our technology, talking about decentralization across numerous different areas. And so that's what I think is happening right now, is we're going to break up and become more of a decentralized governing model without as much emphasis put on the federal government, because those are the trends that we're seeing in every other sector. And it's almost like the problems of centralization are being overemphasized. And, you know, they're just being pushed out over and over and over again, so that everybody can see the problems with centralization, not just with government, but also with large corporations, also with finance and with banking and with our technology. So we're seeing a decentralization movement take place in numerous different areas. And I think that we're seeing the same thing with the government. And that's why all of this is happening. And I imagine what we're going to move to is more of a model where states run themselves, states are autonomous, they're not relying on the federal government for policy, and each state is their own individual state that is autonomous from the federal government. I think that that's where this is all going. Growing number of companies suspend mandates, including hospitals and Amtrak. Facing a labor shortage, some healthcare systems and federal contractors are temporarily lifting their requirements. One, ph one physician called the move absurd. Now, I'm not just going over this because this is what the private sector is doing. Think about the press coverage here. Think about the press coverage. Are, is the press coming out and calling them conspiracy theorists? Is the press coming out and throwing them under the bus? Is the press coming out and just attacking them for going against the mainstream narrative? No, that's not happening. So why do you think that that's not happening? If this were to happen six months ago, they would have been piled on by every single person in the press. But the press is starting to pivot and the press is starting to cover this more like, oh, well, they're not they're, They say it doesn't really make sense. So here's the story. So we're starting to see a pivot and the pendulum is starting to swing, in my personal opinion, because I know how the media covered this six months ago. And all you really have to do, if you want to know what's going to happen in a general sense, not specifics, all you have to do is really pay attention to how the media covers things, because they will let you know when they're about to start to make a shift in a particular area. And that's what's happening right now. All right. A growing number of healthcare systems and other companies, including Amtrak and General Electric, are suspending mandates that require employees to be medicated against the virus. The move follows court rulings in recent weeks that pause such requirements from the Biden administration for, for health workers and federal contractors. Still, the decision about whether to require mandates remains up to the individual employers. The mandates are being suspended at a precarious time. Many employers face short labor shortages. While virus cases are surging and highly mutated variants are spreading. So we're seeing this here on top of this. I did not realize he came out and said this the other day. And I'm not like an Elon Musk fanboy. I'm just saying he's one of the most powerful people in the world. One of the more influential people in the world was just named Time Magazine's Person of the Year. And, you know, you, you can tell a lot by how the media covers certain things. And as, as you can tell, they're not coming out and calling him a conspiracy theorist and all this other stuff. They're not doing this with these different corporations that are in these governors that are coming out and saying, yeah, we're not doing this anymore. That's it. It doesn't make sense. So here you go. I'm going to read this for you. Uh, we should encourage people to be medicated, but not force them to be medicated or force them to get medicated or get fired. We have to watch out for the erosion of freedom in America. The pendulum is starting to swing. Two major airline CEOs question the need for masks on planes. So the two CEOs of the most of the two nations' major airlines, uh, American Airlines and Southwest Airlines, both of their CEOs came out and said, I think the case is very strong that masks don't add much, if anything, in the air cabin environment. It is very safe and high quality and very high quality compared to the any other indoor setting. So you cannot have these policies, you cannot have legitimacy within the federal government and their policies if you have the private sector continually coming out and undercutting them. And look at this, this is from CNN. Do you see anything, there's nothing in here where CNN is attacking them and calling them, you know, they're crazy, they're, they're a danger and, and they're putting everybody at risk and so on. And so they're not covering it like that. And they're not covering it like that for a reason. The reason is, is because there's about to be a shift and the media is letting people know that by the way that they are shifting their coverage of this particular subject. All right, 
Miami's mayor, Bitcoin has the ability to peacefully eradicate communism. We know what's happening in Florida. We know what's happening with the mayor and also with the governor in Florida. But I will say that this is happening on both sides of the aisle. This is a Democrat governor. This is a Democrat governor, one who took pretty seriously restrictive measures early on. And now the pivot is starting to happen. And I think that what we are going to see is we're going to see a decentralization movement across numerous different areas. You look at corporations, what are we seeing? Decentralized autonomous organizations start to pop up to fix the problem with very centralized monopolies that have become entirely too powerful. So I think we're gonna see this in the federal government where we break up and state governments become more important. Same trends are happening with corporations. The same trends are happening with banking, with finance and with technology, with cryptocurrency and with blockchain technology. This is going to coincide Unfortunately, the you know the final the the good pushback against all these authoritarian measures it's going to coincide with the collapsing of the economy, which is unfortunate. But you know this is all happening at the same time. This is a gen this is a collision course. This is a, a an absolute collision course on the track to a, a total collapse. That's where we're at. Uh, you know, so the centralization problems they're being overemphasized by crazy policies. You know, politicians do not make. They're not ultimate decision makers. They're ultimately told what to do in my personal opinion. So if they're implementing crazy policies, they're implementing the policies they are told to implement. And what's happening as a result of that, destruction, chaos, confusion, and the delegitimization of the federal government and of these crazy policies that are about to start getting a lot of pushback from the private sector and from other public officials. People are resistant to change, but if the problem is bad enough, they are more receptive. Think about, go back five years, all these crazy, you know, you go back five years and you were to implement an entirely new internet and financial system just out of nowhere. Well, there weren't enough problems that were happening to be able to introduce that big of a change. People are resistant to change. People get very comfortable with the way things are and with the status quo. However, if everything is collapsing, people are overwhelmingly more receptive to change to change what they've known their entire life, what they're used to, they're, nor they're are open to changing the status quo when the status quo becomes so unbearable that it's just no longer sustainable. And that's what we're watching right now. So just it's important to look at the whole picture here and not just view anything in a vacuum because all these things are happening simultaneously. Somebody has to be the fall guy. It's gonna be the politicians, in my opinion. If you listen to Jerome Powell the other day, what did he come out and say? They asked him about monetary policy and they said, you know, do you have any regrets now that you're looking back and see how what's happened with inflation? Do you have regrets, regrets about how y'all approach this? He said, hey, we didn't do anything. This was the Congress that was passing these bills and that was sending it over to us. We're not elected officials. So we don't we don't, you know, give our input in that regard. So whatever they the elected officials that are elected by the people, whatever they decide to do is what we execute, but that's not our decision to do that. That's the legislature. So he clearly came out and said, that's on them. I don't know if y'all caught that or not, but that did happen. So I can see this becoming a trend. And that's why I'm telling you, I believe the politicians are gonna be thrown under the bus here. And I think it's happening right now. So even though, even though the dam is breaking, and authoritarianism is on life support for the time being, because I think all of this was designed in my personal opinion. So, you know, it, it's, it's on life support right now. It's not gonna be on life support forever. It will resurface in a different form in a more covert way, a few years from now, I believe. But I just wanna leave you with this. The price of freedom is eternal vigilance by Thomas Jefferson. I do think that we'll see a major, major pushback start to develop with these authoritarian measures. And I think that that's what we're watching right now. On top of that, we're seeing chaos all over the world. We're seeing new catalysts pop up every day that could be the main cause of a huge economic collapse. And on top of that, we're seeing mass implementation and adoption of the new technology every single day, which has been well-documented on this channel and many other channels. So that's all I have for you today. This was not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. Just wanted to leave you with this. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. Thank you everyone who has liked, share, and subscribed. Take care. Have a great day. I'll see you in the next video.